Welcome, good evening, Masa al Khair, Marhaba, Salaamu Alaikum. I begin by acknowledging that we are meeting today on Indigenous soil, Indigenous people's land. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming here tonight to celebrate with us. Before I even begin the actual, my actual talk, I want to acknowledge several people who made this evening possible. Everything here is volunteer work. It's really important to understand that everything is a grassroots volunteer effort. It would not have been possible without all of you. I want to acknowledge Ibrahim Safi, who's going to be sharing some of his creative music with us, uh, and, uh, and the several restaurants and catering companies, Alibaba, Sunrise Valley, Sam Sandwiches and Coffee, Sun Valley Market, Atiyah Atiyah, and Alami Kurnah. All of the people who donated the food and uh, the drinks that you are enjoying today. These past two years, have been very difficult and trying for us. But today we come together to offer our gratitude to all of you, our communities, and to celebrate three main achievements. First is the memorandum of understanding that President Wong signed with Al Najah National University in Palestine, which is number one university in Palestine and number four in the Arab world. President Wong will speak about that, but I should just say that this is the first time we have any uh, agreement with any university in the Arab or Muslim world. And we are very excited about that. <laughs> the second achievement is the Edward Said Scholarship, made possible by Alam al-Qadah, who two years ago, at a meeting at the Arab Cultural and Community Center, when President Wong has just became president of San Francisco State, came to visit with the community, and people from different parts of the community met. And Alam said that I want to start the Edward Said Scholarship with a donation. Today, we actually have the Edward Said Scholarship. It's real. Students can apply. And if they have a GPA 3.5 and above, sorry, it has to be that way because we are looking for excellence. And students who exemplify the life of Edward Said can apply for this scholarship. And we hope to be able to award for the next four. And we're very, very, very happy about that. And that now we have actually a scholarship and we hope to grow. And the last but not least is that I'm really proud to announce for people who have just joined us that this afternoon, the Academic Senate of San Francisco State has unanimously adopted the Ahmed Minor. <laughs> this minor would not have been possible had it not been for the collective efforts of everybody who's here. The stubborn campaign that many people in this room and people who are not in this room but are with us in spirit have made possible in our community of justice. When we say our communities, we're not talking just about Arab communities. We're talking about the community of justice, of people here and people who are there, who've always stood by us and made this possible, even at the time when we felt really down, when we felt things are not happening, when we felt really stressed out, people came and they've been supporting. And I want to mention uh, that there are several of these achievements would not have been possible without specific people I would like to name them. The memorandum of understanding with Al-Najah University would not have been possible had it not been for the efforts of Mira Nawaz. Mira is a graduate of Al-Najah University and she is now a student at San Francisco State University in the MA program in communications. The minor in Ahmed studies would not have been possible. Lastly, this past two years, without the efforts of Jackie Hussari, where is Jackie? <laughs> and the people who started it in 2007, Dr. Samuel Schumann, <laughs> and, and Dr. Baya Barwes, who has started the Arabic program even before him. So, The committee for this program, just give me a little bit of time because I really want to acknowledge, I think it's really important to acknowledge people, so give me one more minute. <laughs> the committee that made this program happen is made up of Lina Arepa, the most recent addition to our uh, program, Jamal Tajani, sitting over there, Mira Nabulsi, Jackie Hussari, Jaime Veve, Heather Abu Diab, Alex Sanchez, and Dean Montero. 
These are the people who, who put this program together. But in addition, today at the, at the minor meeting, at the Senate meeting, there were two people who made specific uh, comments. I, where is Cindy? Is Cindy Wolzak? <coughs> Cindy Wolzak. Oh, there she is. The chair of craft who made an amazing talk that if we had written it ourselves, it would not have been as, as good. And Rob Collins, who responded by making also an amazing speech, which actually captured, sometimes people agree with you, but they agree with you for the wrong reasons. What you said today captured exactly what we stand for and what we want. Also, other people who made it really possible are people in the college. And <coughs> even, I want to mention Associate Dean Amy Seale, who read drafts after drafts after drafts, who give it to her the next day, she give it to us with comments, but what we're supposed to do. My colleagues in race and resistance studies, some of them were here this afternoon. And uh, people like Rosalie, where is Rosalie? Rosalie Scalia, or she left? Rosalie Alfonso, uh, who's administrative assistant in the college, who's been here for a very long time, who's made this stuff happen. I think it's really important to think about everybody who has been participating. There are people also in the back, the students, who are the bloodline of our work, Amina, Rasmiya, Jocelyn. This is, this, is, this is the work that brings us together. And of course, the two Ahmed uh, research, uh, research uh, students, Heather, uh, Heather Porter Abu Diab and Mira Nabusi. And I should say that Heather is the third person to be studying Ahmed studies in her MA program. She's focused on Islamophobia as it moved from Europe to the United States around 14 years. She's really, really interested in what we're looking to hear from that. I will talk about the other person later on. Uh, I, should, I would just want to say a few things about uh, the minor. The minor is, focuses on social justice, and it's enshrined in the spirit of 1968, by which the College of Ethnic Studies is grounded. It, Ahmed Minor addresses and studies Arab communities, as well as non-Arab ethnicities in Arab majority communities, Muslims and non-Muslim religious cities and Muslim majority communities. That's why the name is very long. It's grounded in the US and transnationally, and we, we hold ourselves accountable to our communities. Meaning that not only do we teach the offsprings of our communities, and again, it's communities of justice, but we also hold ourselves accountable and we tell our communities what we are doing and how we are studying, because we are studying the lives of the communities from which we live our family. So we feel it's only fitting for us to give back. We are intent to train our students to engage in a climate without hate, racism, Islamophobia, anti-Arab discrimination, or any sort of discrimination along structural inequalities on gender, sexuality, race, class, age, ability, to name a few. In short, we are building a community based on the indivisibility of justice. I sh the last thing I want to say is that we have at least 15 new courses that are all have GE status from American ethnic and racial minorities to global perspective, to social justice, to upper and lower division in social sciences and the humanities. So we want all your efforts to help us to recruit, to include students, to get them to come. They can take the minor and also collect their GE requirements at the same time. We're very excited. This is really long time in coming, and we thank you for being here tonight. to introduce somebody who got me involved in all of this <laughs> in the spring of 2006, I believe. The Dean of the College of Ethnic Studies, Dean Montero, has been a supporter, has stood for justice, has stood for Ahmed. I get a bit emotional because it's been really, really difficult, but we made it. We're here today. And the most recent honor that we're very proud of is that Dean Montero was this past weekend elected the president of the American Association of Blacks in Higher Education. So it's my honor to introduce him. I can give you a repeat of my dissertation that I memorized years ago, and so if you plan to stay here. In, in honor of the closeness of the new closeness of the United States of Cuba, I will do a Castro speech and settle in. <laughs> but no, in honor of this important occasion, brevity is much more important. Oh, the reason why history is never dead is because it's always remaking itself. I got here almost 30 years ago, and uh, 
I won't name some of the students in the room who were students at the time, but maybe Ceylon was uh, just was was was, was well, he came a little after that, but not too long after that. And you had but you but the important thing is you had folks like Alam who were already student leaders here. Uh, you had students from the uh, Muslim Student Association and the General Union for Palestinian Students. They were already leaders here, and they and they'd been leadership for decades before I got here. And they were already making change. And during that period of time, you you would then chair the Student Center Governing Board, and then one of your colleagues decided to do something that no student had done before or done since, which is to be the sitting president of the Associated Students and the Student Center Governing Board at the same time. Uh, an, an act that produced a political activity similar to the term limits that were used to make sure that Willie Brown couldn't get reelected again. And there was, there's a policy now that says you can't, you couldn't have it. And, but now we don't worry about that because we only have one board. So it's much better. You can actually move it forward in a, in a united way. But basically that student activism I mentioned because it set the groundwork. It set the groundwork and it connects this movement to the College of Ethnic Studies. The College of Ethnic Studies is an academic program. AMED is an academic program. But it is born out of both the demand, the questions, both intellectual and practical, that come from the community of the studied, which means it is intentionally not a study of us as objects. It studies of us as participants and empowered in our own lives. So Ahmed is born out of the, the, the brain of um, Dr. Abdul Hadi from that perspective. So it's not an artificial connection we have here. It's not just, you know, we were on the phone uh, back there and said, oh, would you like to come out to San Francisco State? We talked about this for actually a couple weeks about how this would work, what would it look like, um, <clears throat> to the point where we were talking as I was actually going on vacation and the phone was going to go off to make sure this happened. So that connection is important moving forward, understanding that we've taken a long-standing history of a college that does this, with a new program birthing an approach to the study of Arab and Muslim ethnicities in the academy that is not being done anywhere else in the nation. Nowhere else in the, not, there, there, are good, there are good academics elsewhere in the nation, but there's no structural, institutional place where the study of Arabs and Muslims in the diaspora American, Arab Americans, Muslim Americans, and in the diaspora, such that it is being done embedded from within the community. And that's what makes it different. That's what makes it great. There are people here who were on the task force at Purdue State. I, I, um, actually, I was sitting beside one of them, um, Professor Connie, you, uh, you were on that. I saw uh, Reverend Yoshi. I maybe missed uh, Jamal Dajani was there at the time. There are a few other folks who were not in the room. There, 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 was, there was a task force that actually recommended this. And out of that task force was not just the recommendation to be done, but to be done in the College of Ethnic Studies. And we didn't know if we were going to find the right person. And we did. So we worked you, worked you, worked you, worked you. And I want to congratulate you on giving birth to this wonderful idea and making it, giving it birth here in a place that, that, that makes sense. Now, I was feeling so sweet about it. Uh, I think it's some sweet, sweet <laughs> So thank you. Welcome to those of you who have not uh, visited the San Francisco State and, and the College of Ethnic Studies. And um, I'm going to be stepping down because you get a real treat. Uh, and actually, we, we do signals across. We do body signals. Across. Um, and I, I want. Uh, uh, I have a real treat because uh, I still like. I still like calling him the new president because um, <laughs> after three years with us, you're not necessarily new, but um, when you've, you've already been here three years, you've already established things, you've already made some changes, you've already got your strategic plan in place. When you have a president who has already done those things, already made connections and relationships downtown, taking the graduation down to at and Park because of those relationships, when you can do all that and still every single time we meet, if we're sort of thinking in a rut and we're sort of thinking oh, let's just do the same old thing, but put a bow on it. He'll very politely and gently look at you and say, you know, I know we were supposed to be talking about this thing, but 
I'm not interested anymore unless we can get something you know, going here, get something exciting. And the fact that he's willing to get something going and disruptive and, and we don't need to do the same old thing, well, it fits for the College of Methodist Studies. It fits for what's happening in Ahmed. It fits for where our future is going. So daily, I like to reintroduce you to our new president, President Wong. And I can't wait to talk to you. I have been thinking for a number of days uh, of how to introduce what I wanted to say tonight. Um, and it's been very difficult because one of my unusual and strange habits is I lay out all of my public speaking engagements and I pick one of them and I'm a runner and my goal during my run is to only think out what I want to say. And this has been a difficult week preparing for tonight because I hurt my foot <laughs> and I haven't been able to run. And so if I stutter or appear like I am unsure of what I want to say, it's because of my foot and uh, not because of my heart. Um, there are a couple things that I, I want to say to you from the heart. Uh, number one, I'm just so proud that you're on my faculty uh, here at the university. And uh, I want to commend uh, Dr. Abdul Hadi for persisting. Um, and, you know, she's not a shy person. <laughs> and, and from the president's perspective, you know what I mean. Uh, but she is a first rate scholar. She is the model of the kind of person that I want around young people. Because in many ways our job is to make sure that young people own their own mind. And the only way to do that is to provide them the kind of inspiration, teaching and learning that inspires not only themselves but the world around them. And then students can decide whether they want to join in or not, whatever. And, and I think having her on campus, our ability to, your ability to have worked hard to, to form an alliance to get the minor approved today, I think is a credit to your scholarly habits and your contributions here as a citizen of this, this great university. Um, I want to thank Ahmed and everybody who's part of that uh, as well, uh, because uh, in many ways when you uh, have a brilliant idea and no one else on campus recognizes that you have to keep pushing and pushing and supporting and supporting and being emotionally close uh, to some very important ideas that our students uh, need to uh, be around. Third, I want to offer my personal congratulations to the student leadership of GUPS. Uh, and to the community. They have been an inspiration for me. Uh, they remind me of what my job is all about. And they have helped me when I have had to tell other community groups to mind their own business that uh, <laughs> GUPS is the very purpose of this great university. And so I want to thank the students who have persisted in that and uh, have kept the dream alive from a student perspective. And I think oftentimes that's the most important uh, perspective. Fourth, I want to thank the uh, local uh, Palestinian group. I've had the honor of visiting the center. Uh, and I want to thank the, the people that run that and volunteer it and provide a valuable service uh, to this community. And again, I think it's an inspiration. So I, I want to make sure I, I got those uh, kudos and congratulations uh, in place because in many ways, uh, as I tell the people around me, uh, I'm a catalyst for action. I'm not a leader of action. I'm not a creator of action. What I can do is set the stage for change in action to occur and people around me can, be in, can choose to join in on that. 
And I've been very pleased that I attracted a group of radicals around me that when I propose ideas that would shape the academic community, uh, they don't really say it, but they go, Les, we're right behind you all the way. Uh, and that's always a little inside joke. But um, we've tried to do some important things, and that is to make sure that our soul is still connected to the communities that are important to us, and that's this community. And that when we do not participate, serve, or respect that community, we in many ways have lost our soul. And whether that is a community of one person, one family, one block, one neighborhood, it doesn't matter, okay? But when we lose our commitment to the very purpose of this great university, we have truly lost our soul. And so when I think of Ahmed and Gubbs and the students that have uh, persevered, et cetera, it tells me that we're on the right track. Yeah, we are on the right path. That's why it was really easy for me to sign the agreement for, uh, to work with NSU University. And now I'm thinking, why aren't we signing more relationships uh, with other Arab universities out in the world? Now don't go spend more money now. <laughs> I still have to mind the bank. But, um, truth be told, um, when I returned from Palestine two years ago, I was asked by a newspaper what, what in my sort of lessons and goals were. And I said, I want to be one of the first major universities to sign an agreement with Anisha or uh, the, any of the other Palestinian universities or any of the universities in the Arab world. And that was before I even met her. And so she became a means of making one of my goals and dreams come true. And so today I asked her, I said, when are we going? You know, and she said, when you're ready. And that kind of scared me. <laughs> um, you know, I hope to work hard to make that relationship not only with and Naja powerful and a great experience for our students and faculty, but one that will persist uh, into the 22nd century. That's what great universities do. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're trying our best to do our best to keep our values right in front of us. Mr. Nava, the, our, my Vice President for Advancement, he helped me and, and oftentimes led the charge when we work with students to be, and we're still the largest university and the first public university to divest from fossil fuels so over two years ago. Um, we have done a number of things in supporting the College of Ethnic Studies that many folks across the country had given up on. Well, we won't. Uh, in the past two weeks, uh, my life has been pretty interesting because uh, I asked the people around me, um, what would you think if we became the first university to ban the use of our money for anybody to travel to Indiana. And everyone said, we're on, we're with you. And uh, as of today, we were the only university in America to stand with the LGBTQ community and say that we will not do business with a state that sets the stage for nefarious ways to discriminate against the LGBT community. And I want to thank the students and faculty and staff that stood by me. Uh, and I was really quite proud. And let me tell you, I can tell you exactly how many thousands of emails your email box can hold. <laughs> okay. And I can tell you proudly that 99% of the email that traffic that came to my office uh, was positive. In fact, I saved all the ones from students across the country that said, I sent your statement to my president and asked him or her, why didn't we do something? And that made me terribly proud. So um, just, you're gonna be the first to know this, I'm going to lift the ban 
on a travel and business with Indiana on Friday, uh, except for one person. And I've informed the NCAA and the governor of Indiana and the chancellor of the Cal State University system that I will continue to stay away from the state of Indiana till the end of this semester or until they repeal the law in general. And so I just sent that email out uh, 30 minutes before I came here. And I think that if presidents and students can stand by a principal, then there is no value to the education that you're paying for. That's right. And so I felt that I needed to release the university and others to make their own mind up about going to Indiana. But I had made my mind up in that um, the university has a ban on only one person who has chosen that ban, and I will stay out of Indiana and other states that continue to discriminate against the LGBT community, the Arab community, or to tolerate hate crimes against the very people that uh, are just unjustly treated. So uh, we're going to live our values. Uh, we're going to make sure that our actions are consistent with those values. And the faculty and staff know that when we compromise those values, I will be the first one to ask them, why are you doing that? Why are we doing that? And where do we take our stand on injustice in whatever way we encounter it in this very complicated world? Now, we're not perfect, right? And we'll not always make the right call a lot, you should know that a lot of the emails that were on the negative side said something to this effect. Okay, smarty pants president, what about the other 14 states, etc.? And I wanted to write back saying, well, it's not only those 14 states, but maybe about 50 other countries that are terribly difficult on the communities of my students that I find very valuable. And I said, maybe we don't go anywhere, right? And that we celebrate our commitment to high values among ourselves. But that's not gonna happen, okay? Um, so what I hope uh, students are learning is that this president, uh, my staff, my vice presidents, the faculty, we're very much in the camp of lining up how you learn your values, the ways in which you practice those values, and the way in which you are committed to those values. And so it was, uh, despite, you know, uh, what I, in fact, I haven't heard any, you know, I was anticipating a lot of criticism of our, the signing of our relationship with Amnesty University. Uh, I feel deeply that it was not only the right thing to do, but this university should have done it 20 years ago, 50 years ago. Uh, whatever it might be. So we're playing a little bit of catch up, uh, but that's okay. I think the young people that are around me are going to carry our flag proudly, uh, and I'm going to be terribly proud uh, of them. And so I wanted to share that with you. Uh, it's a big night to get that minor uh, passed. Uh, it's just a small step towards a growing sense of importance and permanence on this campus. Uh, I'm already trying to think through how we get it to be a major. Uh, and I, and I, uh, she's, she's going to get excited here. <laughs> Even though the recession caused us to back up uh, on uh, a previous commitment this university made to add faculty, that commitment has not been lost on me. And so as we repair the budget here, uh, as we implement the strategic plan, I have not lost sight on the commitment we've made to add uh, faculty uh, to support students uh, who are uh, studying and wanting to learn more uh, about the Arab world, and for me, Palestine in particular. So we're going to continue to work hard. I don't want to make you a promise, but uh, I've not lost sight of the promise to add more faculty. And maybe that's, for now, the best I could offer, that at least I've not forgotten. Uh, and in many ways, uh, I think the world has to make the same commitment to never forget. 
And so uh, I want to congratulate all of you. I'm really, really proud that you're part of this community of which I am proud to be part of. And so I want to congratulate you all. We're going to move forward uh, and show the world what, what needs to be done on real universities. So thank you all. Thank you. meeting, sign up who wants to go meet with him so we can ask her <laughs> figure out what the schedule okay. is. Uh, then I, we're going to uh, move on and I'm, it's really my proudest honor to introduce uh, one of the people who, who's been instrumental uh, in Amin and who also has exhibited, who has been working to make this program happen and who has been instrumental, as I said, in the minor, in making the minor happen. It could not really have happened without her. And also, who is somebody who has graduated with uh, an MA degree in ethnic studies, the second person to uh, do the minor, uh, the, the MA degree in ethnic studies, focusing on Ahmed. Jackie Hussari, please. Jackie Hussari was uh, a president, served as the president of COPS, served as the chair of the uh, mural uh, committee in the Associated Students, uh, Students no. Council no. Governing Student Board. Center yes, Government. Governing Board. Also was uh, a, a student uh, in, uh, in, um, in MA, in the MA in Ethnic Studies, and also worked as the coordinator in the office of Ahmed until our money ran out. So that we, but she continued volunteering. She continued volunteering. She worked as a consultant also to build the, the Ahmed minor. She continued afterwards. After the money ran out, she continued. So it's really, I'm really, really proud of you. And I'm very happy that you are joining us as colleagues. And, and Jackie is going to go on to graduate school and become one of our colleagues, hopefully come and teach in Ahmed. So my proudest honor to yeah. introduce Jackie. Thank you. Um, I've been uh, just going over in my mind what do I actually say. And we're, we were only given three minutes, but I think that rule has been broken over and over again. Sorry, Alex. <laughs> um, you know, as Professor Abdel Hadi mentioned, I was here as an undergrad. I was part of GOPS and we were part of the team, Charlie was with me, um, to put up the Edward Said mural and we hit a roadblock and it was really hard for us but I think it helped to solidify in us the idea that um, we had the right to exist and that we're going to assert that right and that we're not going to let anybody tell us that we can't narrate our own story. Um, and so. With a few concessions, we were able to put up the mural. Fayette was our mural artist, along with Susan Green. He was as supportive as could be. And, you know, it started to get really tense, and we started to fight, and we started to say, do we want this, or do we want to keep fighting, or, you know, what's, what's, what do we want our legacy to be here? And I think it wasn't until Professor Abdel Hadi came on the scene, and she kind of, you know, reasoned and said, you know, you guys want a mural. You don't just want to keep on fighting because we knew that we couldn't easily lose steam. And that's, that's the nature of the university. You have students that are coming in and out and, you know, they're here to get their degrees and, and they leave and, you know, the experiences of being on the university always stay with them. But whether or not they're able to engage with the university in the same way is a different story. And so we really couldn't have we really couldn't have continued with the mural without an institution such as, as Ahmed because of the fact that we were of the most isolated students on campus. We never had support on campus and we were constantly vilified and we constantly felt as if we were to welcome. And so I think the institutionalization of Ahmed just showed to us that that we're welcome, that we have a space in which we can assert who we are, we have a space in which we can grow as community members, 
we have a space in which we in which we can become responsible to our communities, to our families, to the university as a whole, and in which we can push forward ideas of social justice that are somewhat new to even ethnic studies. And I think that that's what's really important about the Ahmed program is that we're able to start reconceptualizing what is social justice, what does what does you know racism look like what does religious suppression look like or xenophobia look like for different communities it helps us to ally with communities that go through similar situations which is something that we did while we were fighting for the mural we made sure that you know rasa was on our side and that the bsu was on our side and that skins was on our side and that you know cupac who was our neighbor was on our side and all of these different student organizations we all work together and we created a space and we created the sorts of alliances that the College of Ethnic Studies and that Ahmed, you know, that they have enshrined in them in order to fight the sort of systemic oppression that we all face on a daily basis and that Arabs and Muslims have faced in this country since they've been brought over in ships, really, or since they've come as immigrants or since they've come as refugees. And always we felt invisible, and always we felt as if we were just on the margins or in between the lines of what was being said. And I think the Ahmed program really brings our stories to the fore, and it brings the lessons that we have to the fore. Um, and I really couldn't have become a better ally to communities of color if it hadn't been for being encouraged to, you know, do the MA in ethnic studies. I really couldn't have become a better community member if it hadn't been for me, you know, taking classes about other communities and I really couldn't have been a better organizer if it wasn't for the resources that are provided by the huge library that Professor Abdel has. <laughs> She's like a walking library really. So <laughs> and you know and and all of the, you know, just being able to sort of grow as an individual but also to to grow as an individual knowing that you're actually part of a larger community. And I think like the president said, whether we're an individual or a family or a block or a neighborhood, that you know, that we always have to remain accountable to those people that we're a part of. And so I want to thank everybody here because, you know, even though I I drafted the the minor, I didn't draft it out of my own head. I drafted it because all, everybody in this room had a role to play in that, and you know, not one of us could be, not one of us could be. Um, what's the word? Not blamed. The opposite of blamed. Not one of us could take credit for for the minor because all of us really had a huge role in making it happen. It, if it wasn't for people taking the time to read the minor and to say, you know, I really think that we should focus on this. If it wasn't, you know, um, for people to take the time to come to meetings or to write letters or to even just talk about it while passing on the university, then it really would not have been possible. And I think that that's what Ahmed is about as, what, as an academic program, as a community institution and that um, we just really hope to continue to engage everybody in this room and all of the networks in which you're a part in order to really make this a much more robust and full and relevant and accountable and transparent program. So, thank you. And I uh, thank you, Jackie. Uh, next, I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Jamal Dejani. Jamal Dajani is a member of the trustees of uh, the Board of Trustees for the Arab Culture and Community Center. He's an award-winning journalist. Uh, he's host of the Arab Talk Radio, which is on KBOO, the only black station in San Francisco. He also was with the Link and Mosaic TV, the award-winning Peabody. And uh, he has been actually a staunch supporter of Ahmed has really been coming to meetings every two weeks, has been pushing all of us to do all sorts of things to make this happen, was instrumental in making this uh, reception come through, and also in terms of getting Ahmed across in, in, in our community. So it's my pleasure to introduce him. Thank you, Rabab. Uh, it's a great day, actually, to think about it. You know, it's been eight years to get us to this point to get 
the minor approved, but I can look back, it's actually been more than 10 years and I'm looking directly at Chair uh, Dean Montero, uh, you know, remembering the meetings we used to have at the President's office, former President Corrigan, just talking about the vision about creating uh, Ahmed. And just thinking, Ahmed is a community initiative. This is an initiative that was done by the Arab and Muslim community in, in the Bay Area. And we were so fortunate when we had all these allies and all these supporters to get it approved and then to find someone, and I know Dr. Abdul Hadi does not like to be praised. However, she is the gift that keeps on giving. And I'm saying this, and the, the reason I'm saying that, because Ahmed is not about just teaching a class. It is not really about Dr. Abdul Hadi giving a lecture right here on campus. Because I've been watching her for the past several months, actually throughout the years, reading her news, following her news, traveling here, giving a lecture, holding a symposium right here on campus, being a, the spokesperson for the Arab community. You know, when the Arab and Muslim community comes under attack, she immediately reacts, she immediately holds a conference or a, or a round table talk about Islamophobia. She's there, you know, and this is, and, and I have to say this is because I, I started by saying that this is a community sponsored initiative. And frankly, thank you, uh, President Wang, you know, to hear from you that you have not forgotten about the two line items. <laughs> Please give him a round of applause. I want to remind you that. Because I was going to start talking about this, but I know that it is in your, that, that's enough for me. This is like, this is like the uh, memorandum of understanding <laughs> that you have not forgotten about that we, I mean, this is a one woman's show with her volunteers. I mean, we're talking about a department, but it is really a one-woman show and some volunteers. And that does not come without an expense, and, and this is the part where I have to tell you about the community initiative that I appreciate, like Alam, you know, stepping up to the plate and putting the seed money for a scholarship fund. I'd like you to come here, Alam, because I wanted to talk about that a little bit, in a, in a bit, but, but I want the community to understand that the university, yes, and we're very thankful, the state of California covers the cost of classes, the education, etc. But it does not cover all these extra activities and all these extra important events that are hosted by Ahmed or are, are, have become an initiative of Ahmed. And that's why I want to talk a little bit about our community that we have two initiatives, and one, Alam, he'll speak about the scholarship fund. I'd like people to keep that in mind. And the other thing is what we've done is we have created now the Friends of Ahmed Committee. And first, I'd like Alam to talk a little bit about the scholarship fund, and I, then I'd like to talk to you about the Friends of Ahmed. Just wanted to uh, say, uh, first of all, uh, I am very grateful uh, to this institution, a major college campus, to be honoring Edward Said, probably the only campus in, in the U.S. to have the mural of Edward Said here in one of the main buildings on the campus. So I'm very appreciative of this campus and very proud to be an alum of this campus. The uh, second thing that I really, Dr. Edward Said's uh, scholarship fund, and the program itself, I did it for my daughters. I have three beautiful daughters and I really like them to be able to take those courses, to be exposed to those issues. It is part of the community and it is ours. It is really our program. It is not the university program, it's our program. So any money spent on a program like this, it's everybody benefits, your cousin, your nephews, your daughters, your kids, everybody benefits and I am so grateful to be associated with such a program, program like Dr. Edward Said program, great intellect, uh, a, hum a humanitarian, somebody who stood for justice, somebody who stood for justice despite everybody else in the world and despite everybody else in the U.S. who 
who are very selective on choosing what cause they are following. He selected justice for everyone. He selected justice for the Palestinians, for the African Americans. He, he spoke of justice for every, every cause. And that is, to me, is very powerful. And I'm so proud, and I'm really so grateful to the, and honored to be associated with such a man that is so wonderful. Not only a great musician, he's such a wonderful and great human being. So I'm, I did it for me. If you want to really look at it in a way, I didn't really do it for anybody. I did it for me because I really believe that this will come back to my kids and to the future of my kids. And I want to really take this moment to thank the president of San Francisco State, President Liz Wong, and First Lady. Thank you for really standing up you know, standing up for Indiana, that is a wonderful thing. That is really not an easy task, but it's a wonderful thing. That is to, to, to be able to hold that principle of no to prejudice, no to discrimination. It's an amazing, and I wish that we can do that to a lot of other causes as well. I think we will, be, we will have a better world if we just uphold that principle. Justice for all, justice for everyone. Thank you.